Hi everybody. Let's go over some of the fundamentals of panning in Max MSP. Please download the live processing patch on Canvas and open up the simple panning sub patch. What we have is an audio file, but this can be any audio. Uh, you can have a live input with an easy ADC object. It doesn't really matter. It's being sent to these three places. The send audio is being sent to the receive tilde audio right here. Um, the audio is going into the left inlet of each of these multiplication tilde objects. If you recall the multiplication, uh, this is used to control the amplitude or the volume. We've used this a lot with a function object to create ADSR envelopes. That's being sent into just a live gain object. Uh, the benefit of the live gain as opposed to the normal gain object um, is that it has a meter level and it's also stereo. So you can see right here that it has two channels left and right. So the output of the live gain object, if I were to make this a little bit bigger, uh, it has a couple outlets. You don't have to worry about the three on the right, but this is channel one and this is channel two. So channel one's going to the left channel of your easy deck, channel two to the right. Um, again, this is important to have it uh, for you to understand the logic because we're dealing with panning right here. Everything's going to be uh, moving the sound from the left to the right channel, channel one to channel two. Um, <clears throat> so this is pretty straightforward. We haven't talked about this stuff yet. Uh, but all we're doing is sending audio. We're controlling the amplitude of that audio. And then we have a gain control that's being sent to the left and the right channel. Um, now, the amplitude of the audio is being controlled by this thing right here. This is just a slider. And when I go all the way to the left, it sends out a zero. When I go all the way to the right, it sends out a 127. I'm scaling between zero and 127. And I'm scaling that down between zero and one. So <clears throat> that goes directly into this uh, little, I forget what object this is, multi-slider. Uh, and that's just to visualize what we're doing with the with the slider up here. Uh, and then it goes into this multiplication object. Uh, all of this is just to control the amplitude. When it's all the way to the left, this is a zero. That means there's no sound coming out of the right channel. There's only sound coming out of the left channel. When it's all, all the way on the right, this is at its maximum. This is the simplest way to create panning in Max MSP. Um, now, what we basically want is for these to be opposites or inversions of each other. So when this is very high, the amplitude on the right channel is high, we want the amplitude on the left to be low. So what we've done is inverted that scale using uh, this exclamation point minus. Uh, this is just like a normal minus object in Max MSP. If you were to send this, you know, two two numbers uh, or floats or whatever, four minus two is two. Okay, four. The left inlet minus the right inlet is the output. Now, the only difference between that and the exclamation point minus object is that the outlets are reversed. So in this case, we would do two minus four is negative. What is that? Oh, we didn't send this uh, the right argument. Uh, f 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Okay, so the exclamation point, all it does is reverse the outlets. So now we're subtracting 2 minus 4, right to left instead of left to right. Um, and what this does is it just inverts this scale object. So when it's all the way to the left, uh, this is a zero, and this is a one, and when it's all the way to the right, this is a one, and this is a zero. It's that simple. Uh, unfortunately, you can't really hear it through the video. But you can see it moving right here. Again, uh, you should download this and test it with some, with some headphones just to see and experiment with what's going on. Now, this is just a purely linear panning. Um, as you may recall, our ears don't really respond well to uh, linear sort of processes. 
we hear logarithmically, both in terms of uh, amplitude or, or um, like sound pressure level, uh, d basically di dynamics, um, also in terms of pitch. So this sounds really unnatural. It sounds really weird. Um, these little multi-slider objects are just so that you can visualize the relationship between the left and the right channel. So here the right one is high and the left is low and vice versa. And you can see how these things just linearly, linearly move the sound from the left to the right channel. Now this one over here is the same thing, but we are taking the square root of those values. Instead of being a linear uh, in process of moving the sound from left to right, this is uh, taking the square root of the two. So it's slightly more similar to the natural behavior of sound. <clears throat> You can see it has this curve. It goes down a little bit more sharply, and then it will go up a little bit more, more quickly. And this has the effect of, uh, I guess, fading in from zero a little bit more quickly. So it masks. If you play around with this, you'll hear the volume sort of drop right here when they're both uh, near, not near the top of their amplitudes. Uh, here it'll be a slightly more more smooth transition uh, and it sounds a little bit more natural and all we're doing is instead of just having a linear Interpolation from zero to one. We're taking the square root of that. This one for me is the most convincing. I got both of these from this um, Borrowed this code from this uh, link right here. It's from the cycling 74 Maxim SP forum um, Where they break down the logic behind what's going on here. I just cleaned it up a little bit and put these multi sliders so you could visualize what's happening um, now, what's going on here is slightly more complex, but for me, this is the most convincing. Uh, the logic is the same. We're multiplying that number by half of pi, which is half of a period. Um, it's basically, uh, I, I don't want to get into the math uh, too much, but we're taking the cosine and the sine. Um, if you are interested in what's going on here, uh, it's a little bit more uh, sort of digital audio, a little bit more math. But um, the cosine and the sine will be essentially out of phase. It's as if the sine wave, cosine is just a sine wave starting 180 degrees into its phase. Um, and so what we have here is then we're moving this uh, multi-slider and we're getting essentially a sine, sine wave motion. They're just starting at different points in the period. And this is the most convincing one. Um, So what I've also added is a little control signal, just a sine wave going at 0.25 hertz. We're scaling that. We can attach this to the three sliders. Uh, and you can compare visually what's happening. So notice this one's linear. Again, this one is a square root, so it stays near the top a little bit more. And then this is a sine wave, and it stays near the top the longest. Um, so it's a subtle difference, but very important. If you're going to be using any panning at all in your piece, I'll, it's important for you to understand the logic. Uh, there is a sort of pre-made stereo panner, the pan to s object. This is really great for continuously panning left to right. Uh, you can play a sound uh, and tell how fast it should move from left to right. It's basically just ping-ponging between the two channels. Uh, if you go really fast into the audio range, you get kind of an interesting um, like FM or AM, AM synthesis kind of uh, kind of effect because it's essentially moving the signal back and forth so fast that that creates an audible frequency. So if you are going to use panning, you can experiment with this. If you want to go even deeper, um, you know, eventually you could begin exploring the ambisonic toolkit. Uh, this is something that I used a lot in a recent project, um, a piece that was premiered um, in Nice. 
it's uh I don't know if I have the oh, yeah I think this is it um, you can see uh, it's very very complex patch I did this with a um, audio engineer named Monica Hil Hidalgo uh, she works in France um, and she introduced me to the ambisonic toolkit it's a very very powerful and open source um, way of controlling sound in this case we had eight speakers and we um, created traje trajectories um, where the um, yeah we got a little bit of feedback here. We're still hearing this, so I'll close it. Uh, but this is a way of was a way of creating trajectories. So I had uh, four performers: harp, guitar, bass, and cymbalum. Cymbalum, um, and then the sound would move around the audience. So this was the stage right here. The audience would be seated right here. Um, they would be amplified on the stage, and then this is essentially mimicking the motion of the instruments across the speakers around the audience. And in different parts of the score, uh, I had numbers one, two, three, four, etc. cetera. Uh, and then it would move the, the sounds of the players around the audience. This is a fixed media part. Um, these were little tape, pre-made tape parts that would also move around with the players. Uh, and it was a lot of a lot of work and a lot of fun to play around with this. So eventually, you know, to understand this more complex ambisonics or spatialization, you first have to understand the fundamentals of like perception of spatialization and really get to know panning as much as possible. Um, and then working with this will be a little bit easier. Um, we also had some possibilities for uh, I don't remember exactly where they were, but rotating players with uh, like an interface. Um, so you'd be able to like move, like by hand move players around the audience. It was a lot of fun. Uh, anyway, dig into that. I'm gonna post a few more videos on live processing uh, that are not related to panning or spatialization. And please let me know if you have any questions.